Hello everybody, look, I'm on me Todd this week, it's a bit weird isn't it? So unfortunately you're just going to have me and not me and a n other, such as Sanya or Ganon. Sanya's recovering from a hernia operation, for those of you who are unaware. Um, some of you might recall that we had a car accident 18 months ago and as it turns out the broken collarbone wasn't the only thing that was wrong with her. She also had some of her guts fall out which have now been pushed back in and sewn up. So that's lovely, isn't it? So uh, she is actually sat over there, by the way. So that's going to be, it's already distracting me. I'm trying to look at the camera and I'm already... Hello, everybody. Yeah, I, okay. She's going to turn the mic on and off. So I every can, time, I, and every time, stop it. I can e still interrupt. Jesus, don't interrupt. So every time she wants to say so, she's going to have to turn on the mic so that we can't hear her rolling around on the sofa. Uh or as we had just before filming, hear her stomach rumble. Um, and what are you... Oh, she's turned on the mic. So every time she does it, it's going to bang the mic. I'm just warning okay, you. Okay, I so can just leave it on then. Is it on? Well, as long as you don't start rolling around. I won't roll around. I'm, I'm a still... I'm a very you're not, still you're person. The, you're the most not still person I know. I'm an extremely still person. Oh, this is a bit like mine, isn't it, with her indoors? So, what I thought we'd do this week, so that I have something to react against, as that's always good, um, I asked our patrons for some questions, because I haven't done one of those in a long time. So, this will be a very different sort of video. I suspect it'll be slightly longer, even than our already long videos, given that we got something like 50 responses. Some of them are multiple questions in one. So, uh, I guess I'll, I'll stop rambling and get on with it. We've I've kind of um, sorted these into different sections. So if you want to hear about my kids' to EV career, we're going to talk about that. You want to hear about Digitizer, you can hear about that. You want to hear about lockdown and how I've coped, you'd be able to hear about that. If you want to hear about found footage and the like, you'd be able to hear about that. And if you want to know what colour pants I'm wearing today, you'll also get to find that out. So that's exciting, isn't it? So treat this to I'm, what I'm looking at her again. It's annoying. Um, put a shroud over yourself. No, she's move? moving. Have you got the mic on or off? On. On. Oh. No, but well, why are you moving? Don't I just sit down. Face. No, I don't want you to move. Just lay there. You've got a hernia uh, scar thing going on. Just sit still. Why have you started moving? Stop. No, lay down. Lay down. Lay. <laughs> Kids TV. So, first question is from Oddpod. Go and watch the Oddpod channel if you like our videos on old toys. Oddpod do that, but in kind of much more, I don't know if detail is the right word, but but Oddpod does it with puppets. <laughs> so so uh, if you like puppets, that's the channel for you. He's great um, and he's a patron. And so you should all go and support him as well. And also he had one of his videos, Dan, of like, like got 1.5 million views. Why haven't we had any videos that got 1.5 million views? joke we 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 do toy videos why does no one care about ours we don't have puppets is the mic on how can you oh no it? oh my god is no. it on every I time i on. say is the mic on don't get up to look just use your mind to remember if I it's on got that long a memory okay sit still right so oddpod asks how did you get into writing for children's tv shows that's it's a two-part question that's part one how did i get into it there's no um one way that people get into writing for TV other than to write some scripts and send them off to people. I had written when I worked at Digitizer, um, I'd written a radio script with Tim Moore, who I used to write Digi with. We sent it off to a whole bunch of companies, got lots of rejections, but we had one uh, company that got back to us and said they loved it. And that was planet 24. who used to make the big breakfast. who were trying to move into kind of, sitcoms and the like at the time and the guy there who uh liked it was a fellow called robert popper who was working in development at the time you probably know him as the creator of channel 4's friday night dinner so robert loved it they bought an option in it i think they paid all of 500 quid for that so we got 250 quid each we spent the next year or so rewriting it um we didn't actually get any money for the script itself just an option in them the developer we didn't know how it worked uh anyway um so nothing happened i tim and i kind of went our separate ways as a writing duo uh, as after he left 
Digi. Um, <coughs> what are you doing? Nothing. Sit still. <laughs> Zen. So uh, Tim went off to write travel books and be incredibly successful. I spent the next sort of three years or so writing scripts and sending them off to people. None of those went anywhere. But Robert Popper did remember me uh, and would stay kind of in touch because he, he loved We Two Vets, as the script was called. He's always said it was one of his favourite scripts that he'd ever read. Um, and he... Had, he uh, dropped my name to a producer who was working on Sooty who rang me up and said would you like to write Sooty and I was like yes I mean I hadn't even considered kids TV at that point and that got me foot in the door really and then from working on Sooty I then um, lobbied to write on my parents are aliens having then known the kids department at Granada and it was Robert Popper and a guy called Mark Freeland who worked at Planet 24 in development and Mark also remembered me and he commissioned me to write a screenplay for Sky based upon a sitcom idea that I'd written to him. Uh, written to him, sent to him. And he actually got me my first agent because he said, we can't go forward with this script unless um, you have an agent. So it was the two of them. It was that first script that I wrote with Tim and the two of them remembering me. So I sort of owe my career to Robert Popper and, and Mark Freeland, really. So, second one, and do you have any weird, funny celebrity encounter stories? I mean, sort of. I mean, I'm not. I'm not really going to talk about them here, for obvious reasons. Probably the most surreal one was working with Lenny Henry, which I did for. I don't know. I think we worked together for about three months on a long forgotten show called Lenny Henry TV, which was a just a whole load of internet clips, uh, and I. I had to help find the clips. He didn't like any of the clips I found. I remember one time I'd sent the producer a whole bunch of clips that I thought were hilarious and she had shown them to Lenny and Lenny came in and was like, oh my God, you won't believe the clips they showed me. They're not funny. They're just people getting hurt and stuff. <laughs> and, so, and I was like, oh God, that, that's not funny, is it, Lenny? No, that's not funny. And they're all my clips that I'd sent in. Anyway, but I had to write the links and the gags in between the uh the clips so also with david quantic who some of you might know quite a well-known writer um and yeah i was there for the filming of that as well for some of some of it i can say that one of the guests was really drunk behind the scenes but i'm not going to say who right paul asks during the tough times of last year did you ever consider doing anything drastic e.g career change doing things you normally wouldn't only asking, uh, as I had these thoughts but persevered, others I know have had to severely alter their work life. I've been lucky in that throughout last year I did have work on, enough work that really I didn't stop to have time to think about, you know, how am I going to earn money? I mean, it was a tough year, don't get me wrong. Um, I still owe tax from last year. We had to get a loan out to get through the end of the year. Um, it was tough, so you know we'll be, um, I guess, recovering from that for a while. Uh, this year is is you know I'm currently as it stands, kind of out of work at the moment. Digi is the only thing I'm doing, so at some point I will have to put the feelers out for any work that's out there at the moment. I'm enjoying for at least a little bit, enjoying doing Digi stuff and the podcast and not um yeah not having to worry too much about deadlines so it's it's you know uh, for the first time in a very long time so i'm gonna try and enjoy that for a bit do some fun creative things and then speak to my agent and say right we need to get me some work so so uh it hasn't happened yet uh but i'm not saying it why i mean i don't know what else i'll do what can i do I'd rather see if we can, I don't know. I mean, I'd just like to do this, really. Make funny videos and things. And thanks to our patrons, helping take a bit of the, the sting off of the current jobs market flatness. I don't know. TV industry, I don't know what I'll say. The TV industry is not back to normal yet, basically. But it's getting there. I just had a kids show film. The episode numbers cut by 30% because 30% of the budget has to go to towards COVID 
protocols and all that kind of stuff. So, so we'll see. We'll see how the rest of this year pans out. I'm not panicking yet. Uh, Kimberly Mildenhall asks, if you had the chance to write and direct any old kids TV show, which one would it be and why? Uh, much as I'd like to do something like Rent a Ghost or, I don't know, work on Emu. I think I did ask my agent to put me forward for Emu. It's a bit younger than I tend to write for. By the way, if any of you are wondering what this is, my day job is writing kids TV, generally. Um, but the thing is, second, you can just imagine it, because Rent a Ghost, there have been various attempts over the years, including one by Russell Brand, I think, to, to relaunch it, either as a film or as a series. And it's always had a lot of press whenever that has sort of come up. And I think the second you do a new Rent-A-Ghost, for example, you're you're asking for trouble because you're going to get ripped apart. People will think it never lives up to the old one, which the old one, which is generally pretty bad, but as an idea, it's genius. So uh, I would I would rather kind of pick one that no one remembers. Um, and my favourite obscure kids cartoon or TV show that I, I grew up with was a, a show called Simon in the Land of the Chalk Drawings, which was about a kid who had magic chalk and he used to go and draw on a wall and then climb over the a ladder over the wall and then he'd end up in the chalk land and whatever he'd drawn on the wall would, would have come to life. Then it has the best theme tune, which I'm going to drop in now. Well, you know my name is Simon. I just say as a concept, I think it's got bags of potential. I'd love to do a Simon in the Land of the Chalk Drawings film. And I did actually look up the uh, the rights a few years ago, but uh, unfortunately they're not available because I think it was based on a kid's book originally. But anyway, Simon in the Land of the Chalk Drawings. Uh, TJ at Weekend Lolly Gagger. Hello, Lolly Gagger. Asked, in a fight, who'd win? Sooty Sue Sweep or that crafty little arsehole scamp? Why haven't you mentioned Butch? It would be a toss-up between Butch and Sue if, if Butch was involved. Otherwise, it's Sue all the way. Uh, Tutti was one of my favourite shows that I've worked on. Uh, and we very nearly gave Tutti a voice for his 50th anniversary. And I joked that he should have this thick Glaswegian accent. I mean, like, I'm seriously, we came like that close to actually hearing Sooty's voice for the first time. And then they were up for it, the Granada TV, and were happy for us to do it. And I think it was me that bottled it at the end. And I said, we just can't. It's can't, because I couldn't imagine what he'd say. Um, yeah, Sue's my favourite character. She was, we basically rose to her as a, as a middle-aged woman on the verge of a nervous breakdown the whole time and sort of borderline, um, well, borderline fascist, which there genuinely is an episode. You go look it up, Night of a Thousand Bears, where Sue goes full. Nuremberg Rally. There are beds that need making, dishes that need cleaning, and cobwebs that need dusting. I am going to work you, Sooties, harder than you've ever worked before. But together, we can make this the cleanest hotel in the world! <coughs> what? <coughs> Don't you think I should say please? No sweep. Who would win in a fight, CFAX or Teletext? That's from Richard Shaw Wright. CFAX won, didn't they? They outlasted Teletext just. Uh, he also asked, what characters have you created who haven't been as popular as you'd like? Pretty much all of the characters in found footage barring Goujon John. That's simple, isn't it? <laughs> Actually, the team plant, so he was quite popular as well. Yeah, all of found footage. Uh, if you haven't watched it, and some of you haven't, uh, it's probably the best thing I've ever done. They called him Steve was the act Co-creator of the Apple Mac Duffy, we've got an old bag to catch
Darren Watson asks, do you ever miss doing digitizer on teletext? I miss the regular income and the relative security that that gave. Uh, I don't, not really. Um, Sonia's moving. She's having a sip of her drink. <laughs> you right? Uh, I miss, yeah, I miss the regular income. I can't even say that I miss the messing about with Tim anymore because I kind of mess about with Sanya in much the same way that I used to do at Teletext. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, there was a time when I did miss it and I don't anymore. It's a long time ago since I stopped doing it uh, and I'm very proud of its legacy, but... I don't know, would I want to do that every day? Even, this is the thing, even the last sort of half of me doing Digi for the last sort of five years or so, I was kind of working towards getting away from it uh, and doing other things and working in TV, writing scripts and sending them off. So, so yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, for a while, maybe I did. Not anymore though. I mean, I miss seeing Tim. I haven't seen him in ages, not since Digi Live. Uh, he's been off still doing his cycling things every now and then but maybe now that lockdown's easing up I'll see him again um, alright Chris Bell who runs the excellent Super Page 58 digitizer fan site the only one I think remaining in existence um, but go and check it out because they're doing great work recovering old editions of digitizer uh, he said, we've been doing so well with recoveries of old Teletext Digi lately. Told you. Is there anything in particular you're hoping we find that we don't have at the moment? Anything you're not so keen again? There is one thing that I hope you you don't dig up, but I'm not going to say what it is. Uh, you probably will find it eventually. Um, I think you've kind of, you've kind of found all the big ones that I remember well. Did you find Poverty Day? Povington, the uh, the repulsive brown clown. Um, <laughs> oh dear, Sanya's gone. Oh God. <laughs> Did you find the haunted hotel one where even the toast is a ghost and your daddy is in the toast? I think you did. I'm Gujan John and welcome to the Gujan John Celebrity Ghost Tell. The only hotel where even the toast is a ghost and your daddy is in the toast. Paul. Yes, yeah, the mic, is it on now? Is I, I it's think not so. on, so you turned it off. I, Do you remember I, you turned no, it off a minute ago? I didn't. Is it on? It but, should be on. Okay, yes. I think there might be a good, um, it might be a good idea to, oh no, we say this that. This is great. I'm really glad you interrupted, yeah? I think. Don't bang your foot on the floor like you just did. I think it might be a good idea. It might be a good idea. Could I, you just say it? I want you to bring back the repulsive brown clown. Okay. Every day, yeah. Okay. Yes, thank okay. you. You're yes, welcome. okay, right. Um, the French book, did you find that? I think you did. Um, there's the irrelevant stroke, irreverent games mag thing that uh, some of you might know this story. It's we described uh, games magazine at the time as irrelevant, and I know some of you know this story, and I think like the deputy ed rang us up livid i'm gonna sue you we're not irrelevant i mean i don't know how you can sue over the opinion that that they were irrelevant anyway he was going absolutely ape shit on the phone um and we said he said like i need to print out that page so we changed the text to irreverent from irrelevant and faxed over the screenshot never heard from him again <laughs> naughty weren't we yeah. We were naughty. So if you find that, that would be good. I'd quite like to see the fat sow story that, or was it Gossy the dog that got Tim fired? That would be that would be quite a legendary one, wouldn't it? Um, thanks to Dave Perry. Fuck the haters. Okay, Paul Brackett Spiff says, any plans to jump on the live streaming bandwagon? I think a live stream ghost hunt would be pretty awesome. Also, completely impractical. No. I'm rolling that out now. I appreciate a lot of the work you do is editing, but I think you'll be excellent at the live stuff as well. Um, of late, I have been thinking about it a bit more. I mean, I bought a stream deck ages ago when we were we did that live stream quiz. Uh, and I I did Cheap Show 200, which was a live stream thing. And we 
probably doing another one for their you envision uh special but i i i don't know i don't know how much i enjoy it it might just be something that i need to do and then warm up to and and get used to it's like sort of doing this at the moment just me talking is really weird and i'm not comfortable at the moment just just doing this but i know as with just being on camera in general i'd get used to it over time and it would start to feel more natural i mean this does not feel natural to me me sat here just talking to you sort of one on one you look, um, you look very natural well thank you very much yeah i've not had any work done <laughs> it's a good joke isn't it see i'm much more Excellent comfortable when joke. i'm looking over there talking to her um but i know that's not what you want you want me to look you in the eyes so uh what was i saying what was i saying oh yeah it's streaming but i have been thinking about it a bit more um partly because i've sort of thought well if, if digi live can't go ahead this year because of covid and we have to move it to the spring could we do a some sort of live stream special that weekend that you know september the 4th instead so i've been thinking about that and wondering well should i sort of dip my toe back into the water but i'll tell you one of the biggest issues is there's a lot of technical setup i've got to sort of run the camera through my laptop and anytime there's any kind of technical setup, I get stressed. <laughs> so it's not why we've reduced Digi down to like one camera. We used to have sort of three cameras and it was a big setup. And on top of that, we don't really have a dedicated space in the house. You know, there's a lot of us living here and, you know, we have kids walking through and stuff. So, you know, other, other streamers either live without children or, you know, have a shed in their garden, which I'd love. I know some people recently said, crowdfund a digi studio in your garden, but um, I think Gannon would just be over here full time if we did that. Uh, <laughs> so we're not going to do it. <laughs> oh, Sanya, what? Paul. What? Paul. Yeah, just... um, so, yeah, but what we have thought about is we talked about in the last week, um, making one of our rooms a sort of studio because we do have one room that, that we don't really use at the moment other than to store stuff. It's got a bed in it, but we might change it for a sofa bed and turn it into some sort of the, the, the digi studio and for podcasting and stuff. So that might happen. I would like to give the videos a bit more because over the last year we've got used, this has become the format, us sitting on the sofa. And I, I do slightly miss sitting at the table with that blue wall that we used to have behind us. Um, and it having a bit more of a, a feel of a set but we tend to over the last year we tend to sort of film a couple of videos for patrons and then one video for you guys in a go it was when we were doing it we were just doing a whole bunch with Gannon in one go but it might be that when we start filming with him again we do we stockpile a load because you know so he doesn't have to come over each week to to do it so yeah we we're, so we're streaming maybe is what I'll say because I know a lot of people do it and enjoy doing it I really loved the quiz that we did. That I loved time. doing it. That was that was really good fun. And I bought I bought you know like a, a land cable and stuff so that we could. You even wrote a second quiz. Yeah, I had a whole second quiz ready to go, and then that night it was like I don't know if I, I'm up to it, and then I never went back to it because I don't I just don't think you know if you're not feeling hundred percent unless you really love something enough to sort of push through how you're feeling. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's not the right thing to be doing. So it wasn't the right thing then, but you know, who knows? You know, at the moment, I ain't got any work on my plate, so we might give it a go. Uh, but I think it needs to. Yeah, I you know, there's so much competition out there. There are so many people streaming now, and you know, my timeline is full of people saying, "Here's my schedule," and you know, people like John Robertson, Ashens, uh, Bex Trista. Loads of people have kind of moved away more from YouTube to Twitch. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> it's tricky to say. I like what Richard Herring does. I've watched some of his. Um, that it's just a bit of a sort of comedy show that he does. His Twitch of fun with puppets and things. It feels sort of very digi, but he's sort of already doing that. So I don't know. Maybe if we had the characters in, I'll think about it. Put it that way. Uh, right, so Thomas Fitch and the Nitroglycerin Child ask a similar question each, which is, if you could have any guest actor appear in a theoretical found footage sequel stroke prequel or whatever, what would it be? 
Who would it be? What role would they play? You could choose one living and one dead if you like. No, we won't do that. We'll just do living. Um, because then he gets silly and says, I can't force you to do anything. Um, and the nitroglycerin child says, is there anyone you would love to work with and haven't been able to? Could be in the YouTube world or in your main job. Someone I've been trying to get on for a while because they're a fan of the channel and Beaners in particular is Jim Sterling because I think they get it and they get what we're trying to do and their videos are sort of very similar in that they have kind of found footage inserts and characters and cutaways and things so go and pester them to come on and outside of that Paul Putner if any of you know who Paul Putner is who's worked with all sorts of brilliant people over the years um and I've worked with one of the first things I had on TV was my knife and wife pilot Paul did uh, a voice for that and he remembered remember me on on uh twitter recently we followed each other and gannon knows him as well and paul rather nicely remembered who i was and we bumped into each other funnily enough years ago i think at a party and he remembered i was amazed then that he remembered who i was and so uh and he, he said he'd been following my career i was like what uh, so so yeah paul i'd love to get on um because he's really really funny I know him. I don't know where he lives. I think he's London based, but I might drop him a line. Should we need someone for found footage or just on Digitizer Deluxe? Maybe. Um, who else? I mean, it would be really funny just to get someone like huge, like Robert Downey Jr. to do a character on, on found footage or something like that. It'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? We did, um, Horsenberger knew someone who knew, um, God, what's that actor's name? The one who played Bane in Batman. Tom Ho uh, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. Uh, yeah, he knew we tried to see if Tom Hardy would, would do something for found footage, I think. Or was it for digitizing the, the show? One or the other. Anyway, Tom Hardy would be funny. Uh, so anyone like that would just be good. Um, we tried to get Tim Heidecker in found footage. Uh, he was playing in the UK and I sent him some stuff but we never heard anything. I get the sense with Tim, funny enough, actually Robert Popper, who I mentioned, knows him very well. But I've always been a bit too scared to ask Robert to put in a word for us, because, it, I don't know, that feels a bit, I don't know, but it feels a bit fanny, <laughs> uh, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> I want to come across as a fanny. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, Eric Wareheim, either of them really just a little little throwaway gag i don't know uh ed the penguin um for the obscure cutaways animations and parts that make digi unique and borderline found footage do you keep these ideas in your head until you edit the videos or do you write them down while you when you think of them for instance if you come up with something that you find funny while brushing your teeth do you just think i'll oh, remember that or do you go for a notepad uh it's a bit of all of that there have been times when i've been in the car driving uh, and said to Sonia, can you write this down on your phone? I think Turts and Fans was like that, wasn't it? Yeah, Turts so and Fans was one of them. Can you write this phrase down? Um, Without any explanation. Yeah. You just said, write down Turts and Fans. I'll explain later. Do you like turtles? Do you like elephants? Then you need Totally Turts and Fans. The only magazine that is 100%, 50% Turts and 50% Fans. It's packed with interviews, puzzles, and interesting facts. Wow, fans have four legs. Cool, turds live in my walls. It's totally fantastic. Month by month, Totally Turds and Fans builds into a beautiful part work that's guaranteed to give you fans in your pants and turds in your skirts. But that's not all. Totally Turds and Fans can be rolled up and used as a trunk or placed upon a child's back like a carapace. And what's more, every time you buy a copy of Totally Turds and Fans, 50p goes straight into my pocket so that I can afford the appropriate corrective surgery which allows me to lay eggs in your daddy's yard. Issue 1, out now. So some of the things I've done recently, like sort of funny dancers and hens, it's just been me playing around in Photoshop, doodling, and then thought, oh, I've got to try animating this. Sometimes it, it, it's stuff that's sparked out of something we've said in the videos. Other times, 
there'll be completely random or things I've got sat on the shelf. I mean, I've got a couple of semi-done videos at the moment that I've yet to put in an episode. If this doesn't turn out too long, I might chuck one in now. Completely random. The the thing I'm finding as well at the moment with like the not so much the cutaways, but the characters that we've been doing is trying to find the voice of them. And it's like we've got this one character who um we're calling Cheddar Man. <laughs> it sounds like I like, like bloody Lawrence Olivier or something. But I did this voice for him that Sanya loved. Um but I'm like, no, it that that isn't right. I can't I can't the voice doesn't fit how I want the character to be. And you've been a bit like pestery with like, no, no, it has to be that voice because you found it funny. I miss that voice, but I, I accept it your could be used somewhere creative else. Creative process. So anyway, last night, I mean, some of you probably saw on Twitter that she's recovering from a hernia. So she uh, can't laugh at the moment. And um, I got into trouble last night because I made her laugh doing Jedi Man's thing. It hurt a lot. <laughs> I'm wondering whether I should just do a bit now. Uh, I kind of need to be up and moving around. I won't look if you do it. Uh, Cheddar Man, uh, I don't want to give it away. All right, save it. Yeah, save I'll it, because he's got a whole a, a whole set, doesn't he? He's got a whole thing. I was actually writing a script for Cheddar Man yesterday for, for Digi Live. And then decided to practice it at 10.30 at night. Yeah. After being in a, like saying that you needed a nap nearly really all day. Tired. It woke me up. And nearly being asleep. And then all of a sudden you were like fully hyper and dancing around. But it was good because if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have got what the joke is. Yeah, that's true. It that's true. To, you, you got know, his catchphrase it, it out of it. came out of that. He, out of my pain. Yeah. You got Cheddar Man's catchphrase. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not really a catchphrase. It's a thing that he just does catch word do in- no it's a phrase to increasingly absurd lengths yeah cheddar man coming soon to the digitizer channel <laughs> um, so joe gallagher uh asks crap question but i'm always dead curious how do you come up with the characters oh well there you go and their strange details third birds with remarkable accent etc do you see a ridiculous costume first or do you think of a character now i'm a bird i'm an avian character Third Bird came about because we were watching The Amazing Race. I think we may have said this on a previous Digi video. Uh, mm, it might patrons. have been a patron it was video. A patron, but yeah, but these are patrons. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, where we were watching this this episode of The Amazing Race where I think they were in some Kenya or somewhere like that. Um, and there were hyenas or something that they were feeding. Wild dogs. Wild dogs. Anyway, it became this. I started doing this South African-ish voice well they had to the challenge in the show was they had to feed the wild dogs chunks of meat yes but the dogs were really deadly yes devil dogs they and yeah so then out of that you came up with devil dogs yeah so it entirely depends so that became a thing why he he then i had this 
I don't know where third bird came from, but the words popped into my head, like turts and fans. Sometimes they just pop into my head, like a phrase. Third bird popped into my head, and I thought, well, it'd be funny if there was another Sesame Street character alongside Big Bird, but was called Third Bird. <laughs> so it makes me laugh. Um, and then, but then it's a combination of sort of finding that look and the voice and kind of a comedic conceit. I mean, I, I with Tony Harris. What the hell is a little man? Third bird, action man. The action soldiers team in on nations, males at enemies. All of those, I've kind of gone into that, barely knowing what the voice is, not having anything kind of written, and just having like one joke. Like I, I knew, I knew with third bird that it would have something to do with devil dogs. That was it all the stuff about his mother and the church I'm giving it all away here but anyway the stuff with his mother and the church was pretty, well, all of it is improvised Tony Harris um, yeah all the stuff with Janet and her feet that was thought of in the moment uh, I had the voice that was it for him which again the voice I kind of finally settled on about two seconds before we filmed um, the gag with that was you know I found the mask on Amazon and then thought oh I could wear a green screen body suit <laughs> I'll get rid of my body which would be nice anyway or at least get rid of half of it um uh the lower half in case you're wondering oh. I don't know what that means uh action man again was just purely I I had I knew with that going into that that he would break down what action man stood for each time and it would probably be different but I deliberately didn't have an idea for what that would be I, I kind of thought it would be funny if I am more kind of real if I don't write that out now Cheddar Man is different because Cheddar Man uh, which came about because Sanya well, as I was trying to drop off one night you see it goes both ways started reading facts out to me about Cheddar Man uh, prehistoric man that had been found or something they'd found um, a living relative in oh, that's Cheddar right. Gorge yeah. So she was reading these facts about Cheddar Man out to me while I was trying to drop off. Um, I don't know. I think I, I started going, yeah, Cheddar Man. <laughs> or something like that, Which I? is not his voice. Which is not his voice. Uh, I still don't know entirely what his voice is, but I know what his shtick is. So then that became, okay, it should be a character. Okay, it's got to be a caveman. I don't mind telling you that. There's a bit more to him than that. Uh, and then he's been a tough one to crack because I've been trying to get the voice right. Um, and then it was only really in the last few days that I realised what the the overall conceit was and uh, now I'm quite keen to do it and I will definitely be doing him so to speak at DigiLive because uh, <laughs> I need quite a lot of space for it how he's going to work sat down with Sanya interviewing him I don't know go out of the woods we could uh, that would be a good place for him he'd fit right in yeah Anyway, um, so what, if I answer the question, yeah. So, so to both of you, it's just uh, it's a mix of things. Is the inspiration just comes from anywhere? Another one that we, we will have on the channel soon is Peel Backer, which patrons patrons should get a sneak peek of him at some point this week. You should have seen my grandma talking in Gone with the Force <laughs> <laughs> at the Besbin Playhouse, but. I'm just, I'm not quite there with the character. I've got the look. I've kind of got the joke, but I haven't quite got the voice. And I know Sanya, Sanya's throwing, probably throwing her hands up because I've been doing the voice a lot, but it still doesn't feel right in the same way that Action Man, Third Birds, and Tony Morris's felt Harris felt right. Anyway, Headers asked, "What is the man's daddy, and did you intend to make him so utterly terrifying?" <laughs> Yes, yes, he's coming back. Uh, he's the man's daddy. He's the daddy of the man. Just Steve. Just Steve. 
Uh, two questions, if you'll permit me. One, if budget was no issue, what one did your character, whether from teletext or your YouTube videos, would you want to make a feature length movie for? And roughly, what would the story be off the top of your head? I'd love to see a Tony Harris movie about him coming to Earth. <laughs> Jason Salisbury says, I want to live in a world where a Venus movie becomes the highest grossing YouTube movie ever. Um, I'd like one where they all sort of mingle because I've really enjoyed doing them. And I think it took me a long time to kind of feel confident enough to do stuff like that on camera. Um, because I'm, you know, I'm not Gannon or Eli. I'm not a performer. You know, I'm a writer. I've sat behind a laptop for decades. Uh, and uh, I love doing them. I love, it's the same process as writing Digitizer back in the day because that was very much stream of consciousness and, and just being surprised by what comes out of my head. You know, what you re read on Digitizer was very much pretty much written or, you, you know, real time. You know, as fast as you could read it was as fast as it was typed 90% of the time. Uh, and it's the same with the characters. I, I go in with it a little bit and then just like being surprised by where they go and what gets sparked by like questions that Sanya asks. It'll be interesting to see whether I do any of them with Ganon because it's it's a different dynamic. It works well with you, doesn't it? Because you... Well, you've got an inquiring mind. What? No, that's funny. Yeah, it was Gannon's more of a performer and Sanya, you know, isn't a performer. You know, you're my wife. De definitely <laughs> not a performer. <laughs> yeah, you know, but, but it was Gannon is, you know, similar to me, a show off. And sometimes it doesn't always work together. Uh, yeah, we, when I'm in full show off mode, which is when I'm a character. Uh, sorry to if I'm breaking all the illusions here, like Father Christmas isn't a real. So, um, uh, yeah, so we've had this idea. Again, patrons will have um, will have heard about this already. Where some of you might know that it was it, this year marks the sort of fifth anniversary of Mr. Biffo's found footage happening for the first time, uh, and we're going to mark that somehow at Digitizer Live later in the year, uh, which has tickets remaining if you want to go and buy them i mean not many tickets remaining we're, we're down to as as i speak i think the last 46 or 7 something like that uh there will be space there for social distancing we're not we've not putting all the tick all the seats on sale so um and we will be following all the guidelines and everything else and i'm getting my vaccine on thursday this week or today as per the day this video goes out um so yeah so so something we've been doing is sort of just trying to sort of test the water a bit about whether people would want to see a bona fide second series of mr biffo's found footage uh i have to say at the moment the response has been somewhat tepid <laughs> as we've got to put out you know images behind the scenes images with the the banner and sharing videos on our instagram and twitter and stuff yeah, there, there hasn't been a lot of interest. I don't know why, because those original videos, you know, got were really popular at the time. There was a lot of buzz about it, but I guess we've just developed a, a different audience over time, and you you don't want that kind of weird, slightly creepy comedy. Uh, so so we ha I had this other idea that Sanya likes as well, and I know a few of our patrons have quite liked it, of something called Mr. Biffo's Digiverse, which is bringing together lots of different characters. So from the early digitizer teletext days to some of the characters from found footage to the likes of Third Bird, Tony Harris, Venus and the like, and, and doing a sort of sketch show with them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with my dog, Tom Maestro, my boy, and Zeke. Hey, Zeke. Hey, Zeke. I love retro video game shows. You can never have too many. Would you like a Zhuzhan? Would you like it fast? Gathered up from the moon! Don't tweet about my bins. Hashtag, my bins are not your content. Bears and tigers are even more vicious and deadly than humans. I find that after 12 mint juleps, my quality control quite goes out of the window. But kind of sort of gonzo sketch show with music and animation stuff. 
So it would be good to kind of gauge whether there would be any interest in that. So if you want to leave a comment, don't leave a comment saying, no, I'm not interested. I don't care if you're not interested. Just tell me if you are and would be willing to, towards the end of this year, post Digitizer Live, be willing to back something like that or a second series of found footage. We don't need to raise a lot of money, but we would like to raise a little bit so that it looked good. So Wonky Beardhead and Tyro Man, T-Dog, have both asked, uh, would you be annoyed if someone was to write something based in the Xenox universe or are you interested to see how others work with your creation? And Tyro Man says, funny enough, I was going to ask something along similar lines as Xenox is multidimensional. Um, yeah, I mean, knock yourselves out. I mean, just run it by me first and as long as you make it clear that it's like a fan thing and not something that I've done. Uh, Chris Bullock, who some of you might know from Barshans, she did write a script for a short film that was a Xenox spin-off that she wanted me to direct. Uh, in the end, I just didn't have the time to do it. And or more to just give the sort of brain space to it. But she did, there's a music video that she put out which had which was gonna be the kind of theme music for his her film, uh, We All Fall. And I think Ashens was going to be in it as well. So, um, yeah. And Tyrone also asked if uh, if it was good enough, would you be happy for it to add, add, be added to the Digi channel or their own or not in the slightest? On their own, I think the Digi channel should be for stuff that I kind of have a hand in, really. Uh, but I'm all for people doing stuff that... that is influenced by digi stuff or found footage or whatever. I mean, just just give us give us a nod before you do. Simon Lee Tranta, who was still on the digitizer section, by the way, asks uh, or says actual video game content. It's been a long time since shows like Bad Influence Games, Master Games World and Bits graced our screens. Given the increasing global success and interest in video gaming, why do you think mainstream television largely ignores it? And have you ever considered pitching digitizer to the show to a major channel? Firstly, um, do you remember that show that was on Channel 4? I think it was a little while ago where... They went back in time and it was presented by that, oh, Rob someone. And they would have a celebrity guest each week and they would talk about the video games of whatever year they've gone back in time to. Um, if you remember that, it was awful. Like like kind of eye-wateringly rancid television. And so it's probably best that TV stays away from video games as much as possible. Uh, and... In terms of pitching digitizer the show, well, I know because it would end up like that. People would get their hands on it, and it wouldn't remain. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. 
well, for st- well, okay. There's a lot to unpack here. All right, firstly, I, I'm sort of done with digitising the show because I didn't love the experience. I'm quite proud of what we managed to achieve given the budget and what we managed to, to, to put out. Um, but it was very stressful. So there's that. B, it would get interfered with the producers and the like, uh, and it would get turned inevitably into a shiny floor show featuring all the same bloody comedians that you always get, like that bloke off that other show, the Rob Beckett or whatever his name is, and all the various... uh, I don't know. You know know the comedians, all the Mock the Week lot and the 8 out of 10 cats lot, all all the same ones from Avalon, the management agency... Uh, you'd get all them on there. They'd all be, you'd have them forced upon you. I'd get fired and, you know, you'd get someone else hosting it. You know, I wouldn't have final say over all the kind of weird edits and stuff that I wanted to have. So it wouldn't be digitised of the show by the time it made it to the screen. Uh, I've had lots of people around the time of Digi the Show, Gannon, Big Boy Barry was one who, I quote, wanted a seat at the table uh, to be involved. Um... And I I really, I kind of felt a bit of pressure from people to pitch it as a thing. And I didn't really have any impetus to do that because I just thought this is just, this isn't what I do. This isn't, uh, and I think that's part of why I ended up not enjoying Digitise the show is because it started to feel a little bit like a job. Whereas I do this for fun. Um, This is my hobby. And I don't, you know, if I can make money out of it enough to sort of pay my mortgage and everything else that would be amazing uh, but that's that would be amazing because it's on my terms whereas i think digitizing the show there was a lot riding on it in terms of pleasing the people that backed it um there are a lot of people to please sort of on set so and and then if you add another layer of production companies and um producers and money people then you, you've got a lot of people to please, a lot of people with a lot of different opinions. And the joy of doing this channel is that I don't really have to please anyone other than myself. So, um, so no. In <laughs> short, no, I'm not going to do that. No, I don't mean that. Simon, I love you. Next question from lovely Dave Cully serious question from serious Dave he says when doing something like a Kickstarter for projects like found footage how do you deal with people's expectation versus the realities of making content and on a similar note is it hard to convince people to support something that isn't a physical thing but instead is the manifestation of someone's ideas and then to again manage people's expectations that whilst they might back X Y Z because it is someone else's bit of art it might as well it might well come out as X, 1, Y, 2, Z, 3. This is a good question. And I'm going to have to tackle it carefully. <laughs> First thing I should say is digitise of the show DVDs. Hopefully on their way soon. Just waiting for Ashens to get back to me about something. In case you didn't know, it has taken me a phenomenally long time to fulfill the rewards on digitise of the show for all kinds of reasons um but ashen's we're using his dvd manufacturer now and he's sorting it all out for us because he's lovely so they'll be happening soon um it's just nice that it's sort of slightly out of my hands now <laughs> someone else's problem uh and when Sanya's better should be able to send them all out so um Wow, this is really hard to answer because I think with found footage, I've done two, well, three crowdfunders because we did one as well for the Trojan Arse protocol. And I think I think with found footage, broadly people knew what they were going to get. I'd put up, you know, the, the, the early videos like the the Goujon John one and um, various other funny ones. Like I think Swan Paint was one of the first, wasn't it? Swan Paint. Was I it? Think. Yeah, it was, I think. Um, or yeah I think I don't know anyway but I put those out so I think people wanted more of that what they weren't probably expecting was the whole Xenox thing that spun out of it that it became that slightly sort of weird creepy sci-fi thing with a with a short film at the end of the series so and that was just a case of sort of going where 
it took me and i think i think how many episodes did we do probably did 10 episodes including trojan arse in the end and i think if we just stuck to that original style i think that would have been it would have just got boring over time which is why i tried to do something different with it over the course of the episodes uh and and just yeah, again, with, with Lost Footage, which wasn't a crowdfunding thing, I just went where the muse took me, really, and doing things that I wanted to have a go at, which was with Lost Footage, sort of something that was a bit more musical and had a, something a bit more to say. Our little life is rounded with a sleep. None of us know exactly how our end will come in this life. Sherry, chicken pot, pumpkin, all the pie types. To see ourselves as just another human being made foolish choices as humans do. No one with found footage who backed it ever really sort of said this isn't what I wanted. Whereas with I think with digitizer the show, what happened with that, and it was a mistake to be honest, was we 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 oh is my tummy making a noise now was we got a lot of people back it uh who weren't fans of me or the channel we had a lot of people brought in because we had um we had someone sort of handling our promotion of it and so it just got promoted the kickstarter to a general uh, a general retro gaming audience rather than people who were a digitizer audience who kind of were familiar with me and what i did perhaps might have been familiar with found footage new digitizer of old uh and certainly because we got you know larry octavius uh jenny gannon people like ashens involved they all brought their own audience to it as well so what happened with that is we had you know it was, it was ultimately it was my project i i was at the head of it and I was the one who was sort of overseeing it creatively so so but I think you had had a lot of people coming in there who probably were expecting something a lot more like I don't know Games Master or Bad Influence much more like that 90s thing which was, that was part of our promotion was we, we sort of said it was like do you remember when Games TV used to be good uh, and in my head I think we absolutely delivered on that in in the I think the best um, the best sort of video games TV has always had an element of sort of anarchy and chaos to it but I do know that there were people who backed us who weren't happy with it and there were people who I remember putting out an episode early for some people and getting dislikes on it from backers and that that was really disheartening because it and it pissed me off, I'll be honest, because it's like, you know, you paid money for this and it's not exactly what you expected. So what did you expect? You know, we made it very clear that it was my thing, that I was, um, that I I was creating with a whole bunch of other people, of course, all contributed to it. But I think there was no one on set who, who thought it was anything other than Mr. Biffo's digitizer. But on top of that, then for a long time afterwards, it wasn't so much about the effect that had on the Kickstarter and those who backed it, but it has had an enormous knock-on effect for this channel as a whole. In that, a lot of those people um, stuck around expecting to see more stuff like Digitizer the Show, including the same people that were on Digitizer the Show. So, 
we brought in basically these two audiences. One was retro gaming, one was a Barshan's audience. Uh, you know, and both those audiences are very fanatical and very loyal to those things. And they weren't there for me. They were there for someone to talk about retro video games or they were there to see Ashens or Paul and Eli or, or you know, any of that gang. Uh, whereas this channel, you know, I mean, for God's sakes, you know, I own Digitizer as a trademark. I got the thing, the thing trademarked. I co-created it back in the day. I wrote it, in, you know, more or less single-handedly for the last six or seven years of its life. It's the thing I'm most closely associated with, with everyone. But I think I'd, I underestimated how many people didn't know Digitizer's history uh, and how many people came to it with none of that knowledge expecting it or seeing it as either a Barshan spin-off or just, I don't know, Games Master 2.0. So so they stuck around for a long time. And so I think I then felt a pressure, even though this channel really had started with found footage, which had nothing to do with video games, even though we had the odd nod to Games Master on there, you know, with the, the, the Goujontation zone. Uh, and even though it was very clearly my channel for a long time, um, once Digitize the Show happened, we put on, you know, our our, our subscribers just went zoom like that, hugely spiked. And, you know, they obviously all came from somewhere who weren't there for me, you know, and we're talking, you know, not just putting a few on, we put on like 10,000, something like that. It was insane. Uh, so, so I felt a pressure to continue with the retro gaming stuff and a pressure to kind of have the same people involved, but it, it very soon started to become clear to me the more I sort of tackled retro gaming the more I kind of had Larry and Octavius and Ashens and and people on the channel the more I was kind of being locked into a box with it whereas what I really wanted was somewhere that I could just express myself in a creative way uh, and have fun with it and something that was a hobby alongside my day job so gradually I sort of started to sort of shift away from those, those elements and that meant people got pissed off and we're still I think Sanya and I even though you know Gannon's going to come back we've spoken to Ashens we're going to do something with him soon uh, we've even got believe it or not some sort of retro gaming themed eps coming up um, but it now feels like far enough away from from digitizer the show that I can sort of do that again but we're still seeing a lot of those people express their disappointment that the channel isn't what they subscribed thinking it was digitizer the show was six episodes and you know we've had a long time since then but it's been such an uphill battle to change those perceptions of what this is and to, to reclaim the channel as my own really and part of that has been a silver lining of this past year where i've been able to do stuff with sanya sanya again who isn't a performer who sort of just lets me do my thing really and and compliments that you know even though i will always do stuff with paul you know eli will always be back on here from time to time uh we're not a spin-off of tube show we're not a spin-off of barshans we're a spin-off of whatever's in my head and it's called digitizer because that was the thing i was most closely associated with for you know the last 30 odd years um so where was I going with all that? So yeah, so so it's not so much with with. I think it, I think the mistake I made with digitizing the show, which I didn't make with found footage, is. I just want to make stuff for you, and I'm talking to the people here who are happy for me to make the stuff that I make, um, and we seem to have like a really loyal core audience, of about two and a half thousand people who watch every video when they go out. We've got about 400 people, something like that, who back us on Patreon, which is incredibly generous of them, and I really appreciate it. And that money really helps, not only to sort of pay for the, you know, stupid masks and toys that we look at and stuff like that. Um, and really, I'm doing it for them and for those people who get what this is. So, <sighs> what am I trying to say? I was going somewhere with that. Where was I going with that? Yeah, and I'm and I'm doing it for me, uh, and and 
you know, Sanya loves it as well. So I'm doing it for her. And I get to hang out with Gannon and some and other people who I consider mates from time to time. But um but we don't need it to be huge, is my point. If if it means this channel sort of shrinks away down to you know, just that core audience and we don't get kind of casual people wandering in and we don't grow the channel. You know, looking back over time, our videos tend to get between sort of five and 10,000. When you sort of look back at videos from a year or so ago, you know, they're, that's they're, that's a respectable number, you know, sort of 8,000, 9,000. We're not up there with the big channels where we get 1.5 million views or every video gets 100,000 or 60,000 views or whatever, but I don't need that. Um, and I don't want to chase that. And I don't want to compromise what I do on the channel in order to chase that, uh, if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, so we're still in that period of adjustment because clearly we sort of had this huge jump of, of subscribers. And it's it's very apparent that every time a new video comes goes up, we kind of generally are down a bit from the previous week subscribers uh that's leveled out a little bit recently although since the last video went out when i talked about ewoks we lost a lot in the last week but we also are in the same at the same time putting on people who are finding us for the first time it seems to be you know but on balance we're losing more because i think we're still shedding that barshan's cheap show um retro game audience people perhaps who don't look at youtube all the time and then you know happen to see a digi video come up and go oh god why am i still subscribed to that that seems to be what happens um you know every video that goes up on youtube you get instant dislikes for whatever reason it's it is just one of the saddest most passive aggressive tragic acts i think any human being could possibly do um but you know it's it's comes with the territory so yeah so what i'm saying is if look if i was going out once a week and doing a live show and every time that week i got 2500 people turning up that'd be all right yeah you'd be happy with that wouldn't you you know if i had a little corner shop and i had 2500 customers every week and over time you know i don't know it rounds up to like 5000 or something like that you'd be all right with that so yeah, so I don't need to be huge. I don't need this channel to be huge. I just want, I want to make people, uh, the people who are loyal to us, I want to make stuff that makes them happy. But above and beyond that, I want to make myself happy with what we're putting out. Bloody hell, my throat is raw. That was one hell of a... Do you need a That was sweetie. a hell of a monologue, wasn't it? You need a sweetie. <sighs> Did I ask you a question, Dave? <laughs> How was that? That was good. Um, did you answer the question about offering something that is it's non-physical? Because I think that wasn't even the issue with the Kickstarter. It was more so offering yeah. the physical rewards. So, yeah. So also, so Dave yeah, also did say, is it hard to convince people to support something that isn't a physical thing, but is instead is the manifestation of someone's ideas? Well, it hasn't been, put it that way, although it was very clear with Digitize of the Show that a lot of people were backing to get physical stuff. Uh, and that was because I was um, advised that the retro gaming audience like to collect things that are physical. I wish I hadn't followed that advice because look how long it's taken us to fulfil those rewards because we're not a shop. You know, in the, the past year and a half, things that have held me up, you know, the end of 2019, um, you know, I have family members die. I wasn't in the mood for fanning around with DVDs. 2020 we had the pandemic it wasn't the time to be doing it um, although saying that things like t-shirts and little bits like that are quite easy they're to easier do. to do and i do love sending them out yeah but doing the dvd was different because there were the episodes were longer than we'd originally promised so then there was that whole i had this knot in my head um the episodes were long so they didn't fit onto a single dvd and if they did we had no room for extras. So it's taken me a while to sort of untangle that knot and work out what we were going to do. You right? Yeah, sorry. I'm just trying to get comfortable. Okay. Um, yeah, so so no, it ha wasn't difficult with found footage, but I think you do need a proof of concept. What would have been good with Digitise of the Show was if we had a pilot that we could have shown and said it will be like this uh, and then made very clear the channel will not be anything like this beyond that point. <laughs> And these people will not be on the channel again. 
<laughs> that would have been better. A bit right. harsh. Not that they'll never be on the channel well, they again. Were. They all the... were. They all were, yeah. Yeah, I and know. They but if you, yet but, yeah, but yeah, no one's disappointed. If you go, they might sometimes be on the channel. Yeah. Then they're going to be kind of going... You know, oh, I'll just, I'll just hang on a bit longer, and then you know, a year passes. That's still not, it's still no bloody Larry. Go and subscribe. That's Larry himself doing that. Um. Okay, Lee crimes. Lee crimes. I, I've committed some Lee crimes. <laughs> what? What? His name's Lee Crimes. Okay. What are Lee crimes? I'm arresting you for Lee crimes. Crimes against Lee? I don't know what crimes that Lee does. Who cares? Okay. You've been talking about the link. Oh, Jesus, my throat's giving out. Do you want a sip of water? We're going to be doing something? this video in two parts. Uh, I've had a sip of water, thanks. Uh, I'm, a, I'm not a baby. I know when to have a sip of water, thank you. Have not a, a baby. Have a sip of coffee or a warm drink. I'm all right. You've been Lee crimes. Crying time. Um, it says you've been talking about the lengthy process in pivoting digitizer away from retro gaming and more into an outlet for whatever kind of content you want to make. If you were starting the channel fresh tomorrow with no expectation of previous iterations, what would it look like? Don't know. Don't know. Um, well, this. <laughs> it's kind of this. Maybe. Um, it's hard to say because it's it's been an evolution. And when you start something... Um, when you start something with, with no run-up, you're still finding your feet. So if I was starting the channel tomorrow, it probably wouldn't be like this. This is this has come out as a result of lockdown, as a result of um, the videos we did before. Yeah, we, we've pivoted to a sort of single camera setup because we, we did have those three cameras and it was a faff. Uh, and sitting on the sofa, which I know Gannon is very much like, we must, must sit behind the desk because he likes to have something to lean on. But... And I would like to have more of a set, but I quite like the comfort of just sitting here. It feels more casual, more chatty, and it means it's easier for us to just, just set up the camera and just film. Um, but uh, what would it be like? It's that's impossible to say because it's it, it's an evolution of, of what's gone before. And it will evolve again. We're already planning um, Digitizer Deluxe. We're planning some more Supernatural World stuff. I always wanted it, this channel to feel like a kind of TV show where you got runs of like six episodes or something and then change again. But, you know, so you'd get like found footage, then you'd get digitizer deluxe or whatever. But but what's become very clear over the, the years we've been doing this is that people like, <laughs> like to know what they're going to get. They don't like it when we pivot off, you know, when I put out that Balax video. The other week, we lost so many subscribers. <laughs> That's, since I say it's from the, when we last put up the, or when we put up the Ewoks video, it wasn't. It was the Balax video that did it. People That's a powerful 50-second that. video then. That is, was powerful. It was actually very powerful. Moving. Um, because, yeah, I don't know. That found footage stuff is Marmite, and they don't want it. So I put all the, the, the original found footage episodes up on a separate channel now, Xenox, if you go and find it. Um, but they're still on here. I don't know. That I mean, it's one of the things that really frustrates me. I get, I get the found footage is really marmite, but I, I just don't get that people will unsubscribe just because something's a bit, a bit different one week, a fifty second video. I don't get that. But then you know that's because I think we've got subscribers through through misrepresenting what this channel was going to be, which really found footage should, should have been the, the representative thing. But now I like doing these as well. So, but I'd love to mix it up, but I'm scared of doing more found footage type stuff because, because yeah, it's very clear that people don't like to tune in and get something different to what they got the previous week, even though, yes. Well, I mean, you do have the Xenox channel now, so if you do do found footage stuff and you put it on there, you know everyone on the Xenox channel. Yeah, is you know there we lost subscribers on it. that when I put that hens video up. Did you? Yeah, it's like what were they expecting on that channel? It's like we can't win. That's I'm hilarious. just unpopular no matter what I do. That is hilarious. No, I mean they like <laughs> found footage, but just no hens, please. Yeah, hens, hens. 
I didn't tune into this channel expecting a song about hens. Controversial. Anyway, so I don't know. I can't win if anyone knows the solution other than just putting out the most bland, boring, repetitive content imaginable. Uh, tell me what it is. I don't know. But, you know, we've got our friends. They're what matter. So I think we're going to leave it there for this week. Um, because I need to go away and have a lozenge. <laughs> oh, I need to go and suck on a fisherman's friend. Um, <laughs> I hope the fisherman doesn't get jealous again. Uh, uh, why are you doing that? It's just a bit of a bit of fun. I'm trying not to laugh. Oh, don't burst your stitches. Exactly. Uh, if you want to see the rest of this, because we look, I I've still got loads more to answer. I'm going to put them on our Patreon channel. So if you want to support us on Patreon, uh, we do exclusive videos. I do vlogs, blogs, um, all sorts music, go up on their music. Outtakes. Uh, outtakes, yeah. Sometimes outtakes. we do a giveaway. Sometimes like we do a random a giveaway. giveaway. Which we haven't done for a while, so we no, should we do another one soon. Um, yeah, we do all sorts on there because, again, we're preaching to the converted. So... If you want to be part of that, um, it's stuff that we wouldn't put out on the main channel, even though this video is a bit more like what we do on Patreon. Um, you there are two tiers one dollar and five dollar tier. The five dollar tier tends to get more sort of personal stuff, um, and the deleted footage. The one dollar tier they get videos early and the occasional blog post. And when I haven't managed to get them a video early, they get an exclusive video as well, <laughs> which is most weeks, frankly. Um, and um, yeah, all sorts. Just, you know, or you can buy some of our merch. We've got merch at Redbubble. That's uh, some of it's nice. That uh, There's a Third Bird and Tony Harris t-shirts. Have I done the hard sell enough? Yeah. Yeah. Anything else I should plug? Go listen to our podcast. We've got a podcast called Be Ampod. About Marillion, but it's also very funny. Anyway, uh, thanks for sticking with this. This has been a long video. Um, it could have been even longer. <laughs> I think it's going to be about an hour and a half <laughs> at the moment. Um, so subscribe. Don't unsubscribe this week. Just one week. Don't unsubscribe. Oh, so what do you want? What do I want? I want you to stay subscribed and stick around because we'll do some fun stuff together. We'll be friends now. We know each other. Bye.